Hi, I'm Pamela Poole and I live an amazing life as an artist and an author. Today I'm doing what will probably be my last in the series of inspired art appreciation videos. I recorded these um, during the stay at home uh, shutdowns across my country for the COVID-19 virus to give parents who were trying to home educate or um, supplement an art education for their students at home. And um, I hope that these will be helpful. I drew from um, past years of experience with teaching, um, all different ages, and I put some free lesson plans on my artist website that um, if you're interested in these, you can go grab that and it will be a supplement you can use with this video that you can also do lesson plans, projects at home. And hopefully in all of these, I've encouraged you to go forward with your own research, come up with your own conclusions, your own favorites, and see what you think about these art periods in history. My son wanted to make sure before I ended this series that I um, showed everyone the glasses that I used to wear when I was teaching um, home educated art students classes because I always teach from a Christian worldview. And that means I look at things a little differently from the world. I'm careful about what I uh, select to show um, and talk about. And I talk about the good values that I find in paintings. Um, I don't d dwell on things that really I don't think are good for society that we should be focusing on. I'm more of the Philippians 4-8 kind of girl from the Bible, um, picking out what is good and true and noble and um, trying to share those. So the glasses that I wear, I used to pull out before my um, art classes and I'll go ahead and show you my Christian worldview glasses. You can see that there's a, like a, a map of the world across these. My outlook on the world comes from my, what's in my heart. And um, I hope that that is a nice little way for you to think about um, these lesson plans and um, what I'm sharing and that you incorporate that into your own faith and your own um, education. So today we're going to talk about Impressionism as an art movement, but also I'm going to, because there are so many Impressionist painters and many of them are, are wonderful painters, but these art videos are meant to be short and not to drag on and on. Um, I'm encouraging you to look on your own research on the time that you have for who these other um, Impressionist painters are. Um, pick out some favorites for their work. I know I love Monet's Water Lilies, one of my favorite paintings, but I want to choose only one artist for the focus in this Impressionism video. And so we're going to choose Vincent van Gogh today. To, to explain a little bit about what Impressionism is as an art movement, there are some things that are true uh, kind of across the board if you're gonna call something an Impressionist um, painting. This movement started in about 1870 and lasted till about through the 1880s. Um, and that was the time period that we're also going to focus on when we talk about Van Gogh. We're going to talk about the years 1888 to 1890 when we get to him. Some things that are hallmarks of an Impressionist painting. I'll just use one of mine to, to sort of to give you that because I don't have an actual Impressionist painting here. Um, there's like an immediacy and, and emotion and movement that's created by putting bright colors together, the vibrant colors. Some of the brush strokes are heavy and kind of with a bit of an impasto effect. Um, it gives the sense of immediacy and motion and there's always bright color, um, perhaps even exaggerated color. Uh, this is a painting that I did from a larger painting, a larger work by Vincent van Gogh. I did this during the time period when I was writing my second novel, Hugo, because I placed the characters in Arles, France, where um, during the centennial of when um, Vincent van Gogh had lived there. So I bring a lot of things out in that uh, book, in my novel, and I also include those in the lesson plan. If you want to go to my website, I'll link it down in the bottom, uh, bottom of the YouTube video. And um, the page numbers and that sort of thing are there for you to find. But to keep this lesson 
as short as I can. I'm not going to go into all of that. This was painted, though, because of that particular novel. I, if you follow any of my work, you know that I do paint my book covers usually and uh, or something that inspires me about something that I'm writing in my novels. This pa uh, Impressionist paintings also are like this in that they are very candid shots. You know, they're, they're, they're just very um, forthcoming and uh, that approachable and that sort of thing. That's a hallmark. And uh, then the light is also another thing that is a hallmark of an Impressionist painting. And typically that is achieved through using bright colors. And as you can see, I definitely use some bright colors in this painting. But I want to show you some of Vincent van Gogh's work to show you a little bit more about how his paintings were very much representative of the Impressionist period. Um, I could show you many in this book. Oh, I, I ought to show you what the book. This is, is a book about Vincent van Gogh, and I will list the resource for it in the lesson plans so that you can see it. Um, most of his paintings will be in a public domain. They will be anywhere online that you can go, maybe to the Van Gogh Museum online, get a, get a lot of information about him, and take a look at his work. Because I have a lot of Christian students, and we are looking through the Christian worldview lenses, um, I wanted to show this particular painting of the Bible. Uh, this is one of Van Gogh's, and you're going to find that this is, this is an earlier work. You're going to find that this is very different from the work that we're getting ready to look at. Vincent Van Gogh, um, if you're not familiar with his work, when he started um, living in Arles, he um, went there for the light because in southern province, which is southern France, the light was different from other places and he wanted to experience that in his paintings and figure out how to use it. Um, just to, to let you see what I was working on with the painting I showed you, this is the larger work that um, I uh, did a version of that I was showing you in the beginning about Impressionism. This is actually Vincent van Gogh's version of it. One of the reasons I chose this painting was because when I was writing the novel, I felt like it was profound that uh, all these years later, after his life and death and, and the influence of his work, that his legacy leaves such a shadow. And this painting just really stuck out with me because of the shadow that he was leaving in this, um, on this road as he goes on his way to work. And as you can see, I brought that out in this, and then I also blogged about um, his legacy, the shadow that he left behind. We all leave a shadow behind, don't we? Something that we have done that was good or bad to make the world a better place or make someone's life miserable. This is another example of Impressionism, the bright colors. And I really love it when he gets into the bright colors. Um, the colors that he used suited his moods. When he was in happy moods, he used a lot of warm yellows. When he was sad, he would use darker greens and blues. He never used black. That's another impressionist technique. They don't use black. They use color to express all the values that they want in the work. This is where um, he lived when he was li when he stayed at Arles for about 15 months. That has I'm glad that he painted it because that building was um, destroyed during World War II. On the other side, you see his room in that building. This was his bedroom. It's a pretty famous painting. Most of these I'm showing you, you have probably seen. Um, and as you can see, the colors are vibrant, very impressionistic. That's how they achieved their um the life and the motion and everything in them they said that they had a different way of seeing and eventually once people accepted this different look from the traditional look they were going for in art they had to admit that there was a different these men had a different vision an original vision that had not been seen before it was fresh He's very famous for his sunflowers, and you'll find lots of sunflower paintings uh, by Vincent van Gogh. I've done several and some I've sold, but um, I have one behind me that is one of my more recent. 
I did it with sunflowers. I call it Seaside Cottage and sunflowers, um, but it's in the basket of a bicycle. Um, it is impressionist because of several of the things that I mentioned. So um, I have to say that I'm very influenced by the impressionist as an art movement and um, by Vincent van Gogh as well. And then we're going to get into, especially in my um, lesson plan, um, you will get to one of his more famous paintings, which is Starry Night. This one I know you've seen in somewhere, even if it was only as a commercial or something. And the reason it's so well known is because of the motion that you see, the swirling in the sky. Um, the village below was actually invented. This is something that Vincent painted from his room in an asylum that he committed himself to, to during a dark period in his life. And um, the steeple on the church, it, it was invented, but it represents a lot of deep things in his life that you would see if you go to my further lesson plan. Um, it actually, the steeple raises up into the sky. It reaches the cross part that would have been at the top, reaches into the glow that's flowing here. Um, that intersection with this, in case you can't see in the video, is right in here. And then uh, the brilliance of the stars and the creation. He loved creation. He loved to go out and paint the outdoors, even at night. They say he put candles on his wide-brimmed straw hat. I don't know for sure if that can be um, proved from his letters, but um, that's what they say he did if he was painting at night. So this is one of his more famous paintings. There's also been a song that was written called Starry, Starry Night. I don't like that song. Um, it doesn't represent what I see when I've studied Vincent van Gogh's life. I have been to, um, from the time I was a teenager, I have been to many museum lectures and professors, um, events and, and things like that and studied on my own every library book I could ever get my hands on to learn more about Vincent van Gogh. And I have some different opinions from what um, the uh, a lot of the art community prefers to think of because it's so romantic to think of the tortured artistic mind and, and all of these things. Um, when the song talks about how um, his paintings couldn't love him, but he loved his paintings, but they couldn't love him back, that's not what I see. <laughs> So I don't like that song. I usually change the channel when that song comes on. The music is pretty, but the message and the meaning behind it is not what I know about um, Vincent van Gogh's life. So, now let's talk about Vincent van Gogh's life when he was at Arl. At this point, I want to make sure that I stay on point because I'm one of those, when I'm into a subject, I can just go on and on. So I'm going to be looking down now and then to try to look at some notes that I have to stay on topic and be mindful of your time. Um, you can go into any of this further. Um, as I said, on the free downloadable lesson plan, it's going to be on Pamela, uh, www.pamelapool.com. Look for books, coloring book pages, and um, art lessons, and you will see it listed in that list. Um, I want to tell you, here's my art focus, things I haven't already told you about with the paintings that we have looked at. One is that Vincent van Gogh lived from 1853 to 1890, so he died when he was 37. Um, that's young, but um, he did have a very full life. Um, he went through a lot of different periods of trying on careers or roles that he felt like were his current thing. And so um, you really should look into those. He had a very interesting life. I can't go into those because of time with this video, but I am going to focus on the highlight of his career because in the last two years of his life, um, 1888 to 1890, he produced the largest body of work that has ever been created by an artist. It's unparalleled in art history. He was maniacal to get a body of work done. And most of it, he um, enjoyed the out of doors, God's creation. And 
he would go out to plein air paint, as you saw in this, an artist on his way to work. Um, he would just haul this stuff around with him and go around there in Provence. He moved there for the light, as I mentioned earlier. He wanted to learn how to paint that and just focus on painting. And he just painted and painted and painted. He was relentless about painting. And so um, he left behind over 200, uh, let, me, let me make sure I get this, this correct here. Um, he left behind more than 100 drawings on watercolors, over 200 paintings, and over 200 letters during that time period. He was, uh, he was well-spoken and well-written. Uh, he's a well-educated man. And so he corresponded a lot with people. And part of that um, correspondence is how we know so much about him. Um, other artists, we know sketchy things about, you know, this or that. Maybe he was here or there. But this artist left us a lot of information about himself, almost like a journal format, a, a biography that he's writing. He wrote a lot about how he was feeling, the things he was, that were challenging him, um, what he was thinking with the things he was painting, and um, to give it an explanation. And he talked about his technique. Of, he said, I know that it's unusual. He even felt like maybe it would be rejected because he said I, he slapped on paint and in big, heavy strokes and colors. And sometimes he would leave a whole corner unfinished. And he knew that that was not typical. That was not from any art school. And um, he did, as he was being himself, he did reflect on to others in his letters that that might not be something that's widely accepted. So he painted for himself, basically. And he only sold one painting in his lifetime. Um, of course, he only lived, you know, to be 37, but um, now his paintings are nearly priceless. They, they go for like millions of dollars. So yeah, he, it is definitely an artist that you should look into. If you are concerned about um, a lot of the information that's been been put forth about um, maybe he was mad or insane, none of his doctors ever called him insane. They didn't. They didn't think that. Um, some people um, who grew to like him um, or befriended him, they they said he's mad or whatever, but they didn't really mean it in terms that he's just insane. And so there are, there's been so much speculation. You would not believe all the different theories that I have heard over the years about what was wrong with Vincent. Why did he cut his ear? Why couldn't he, why did he have such a difficult personality and be so hard to fit in and these sorts of things? Why did he um, have these health problems that uh, may have led to his mental problems and that sort of thing, emotional state. Um, I'll, and if you check out my art lesson, I'll, I'll outline a little bit more of that for you. Um, but when all is said is done, this was a painter that he may have been eccentric, but he wanted to just go out and paint in creation. He loved it. And um, there is also the most popular theory about Vincent van Gogh's death, maybe the one that was more um, that contributed more to people thinking that he was uh, insane or, or that sort of thing. But um, before the book and research had ever come out about um, that, it, you've probably seen recently, if you follow anything with art or movies or books, uh, in 2014, a book came out challenging, with research and everything, challenging the traditional idea that he had committed suicide. And um, before all that ever came out, just from all the lectures I had done and all the study I had done, I had never been convinced that um, Vincent van Gogh committed suicide. I'm still not convinced, but remember, I'm not an expert, so you do your own work to figure out what you think about Vincent van Gogh. Um, in my lesson plan, I outline the reasons why I came to that conclusion before um, there was ever any of this other evidence. And now there has also recently been forensic evidence that's been able to um, put forth the um, mindset or the uh, theory or, or maybe conclusion, if you read it, that um, 
the evidence on his wounds, there was no powder wounds, the, the really awkward angle that he would have had to try to get the gun to be able to shoot himself in the stomach and that sort of thing. None of that added up to what we today know forensically. Um, back in his day, I'm not sure how much they had with medical science or forensics or detective work to be able to figure it out. But anyway, you come to your own conclusions. Look it up on the internet if you're um, interested and check out my lesson plan if you wanna know my thoughts behind all of that. And so I'm gonna leave you today with um, what is probably the last uh, video in the Inspired Art History series, Inspired Art Appreciation. Unless something comes up, maybe I have some um, people email me, friends ask for more, maybe something about a certain artist along the way. I tried to keep these short and they involve more of a movement and a big chunk of time instead of selecting uh, little things because I wasn't really sure how much interest there was going to be in these. So if you're interested in me covering someone else, another artist, another art movement, all you have to do is email me through my website and you'll be able to tell me what you think and maybe we can work on something together. Until then, I am um, trying to finish up with getting the rest of the art lessons on my um, website. I I've only got two there right now, but I'm working on getting the others typed up and it's a process to get them loaded onto the website. So I usually just do these when I have some extra time. But this particular lesson, I feel like it will be popular. And so I did make sure to have that link that I could put in the YouTube video. So thank you so much for in, um, coming along this journey with me through Inspired Art Appreciation. I hope that you will look into artists and art movements um, on your own. Look, there's nothing good on TV, okay? <laughs> so, and now we don't, most of the places we don't even have sports. So why not look into something that could benefit you? Um, art appreciation is something that will go with you through your whole life. You can't go wrong with learning more about art appreciation. It will help you in decorating homes, choosing a style of a home, um, choosing your clothes. Um, once you learn more, a little bit more about colors and things like that, um, and definitely about what you put on your walls. So I encourage you to look into more about art history. I encourage you to um, try out some of some paintings, like some of the ones that you admire the most. See how difficult it is to um, follow your muse to be able to paint something. It's not just that one day they thought, oh, I'm just gonna paint this, and they just kind of slapped the paint on there and they were all done. That's not how art happens. And the best way to find out and appreciate all the work and uh, years of training that goes into a painting is to look into art appreciation. Thanks for coming along with me through this. I hope you'll have a beautiful day and that you'll go out and make the world a better place. See you next time, bye-bye.